so what are the items that are going to really determine the inflection point or the shifting of the tipping point? Um, this is a market that can still go you know, deep and backwards, or it can move ahead, and we're all trying to find out if uh, we're at the right point. So some of the positives, post-election sentiment and the ability to have more economic stimulus and the commitment to do that, it seems to be strong uh, domestically and it seems to be strong globally in terms of addressing this environment. Hopefully, uh, confidence can come back in the consumer and confidence can come back in the business space, and that's going to be critical to moving ahead. I do think that the resolution of the big three, put in quotes, because they're all so small at this point, um, is going to be critical. You're talking three to five million jobs, and then you add in the, the trickle down to all of the suppliers. This is an enormous impact on the U.S. economy in terms of how well this is resolved. That will also have meaningful implications in where the, the economy goes in terms of just how we think about the next level of not just the mortgages, but really the consumer loans, the auto loans, the credit cards. Um, how banks are able to get ahead of that and get um, and see where the degree of defaults go. And then the next tier of mortgages. There are 14 trillion uh, commercial and uh, uh, residential mortgages outstanding. What will be the next wave of defaults that hit those? Will it be half a trillion? Uh, will it be a trillion? Will it be two trillion? I think that's going to be uh, an enormous uh, impact on, again, the banking system and the economy to find out where that's going to settle out. And that will obviously follow uh, in lockstep with how strong the economic stimulus is and we're able to turn around the economy. So what do we expect to see, um, assuming there's some stability? Certain things, for sure, boards are going to exert more control. Uh, we're seeing it uh, as they, uh, again, in, in current deals, current environments, uh, we're seeing boards exert more control and certainly ask more questions, be really part of the table in, in large transform, transforming transactions. I think that's important that they do it, uh, and I think they recognize from a legal point of view and just from the right thing to do, it's something that they need to be doing as part of their fiduciary duties. There's no question uh, that in a world of the high degree of success rates around these um, shareholder activist uh, and proxy fights, that boards are certainly sitting up on the edge of their seats, and as they watch business failures and the, uh, the press surrounding uh, the difficulties with companies, boards, again, are paying attention, which, again, I think is a good thing for all of us. No question there's going to be scrutiny on comp uh, compensation. Uh, I will note this is a day off for me. I'm working for free. Um, focus on conflicts of interest, I think, as the, the banking system uh, consolidates and people have uh, positions in uh, whether investments or loans and other companies, boards, again, will pay uh, a strong degree of attention to conflicts of interest and, again, the right thing to do. Increased regula regulation and scrutiny uh, of market transactions. Again, we had an incredibly benign environment under the Bush administration uh, going forward, whether it was McCain or o Obama. It's certainly going to be, um, now with Obama, anticipated to be a far higher degree of scrutiny on all M&A transactions. Uh, and again, uh, you know, we'll see the impact of that in which industries in particular are targeted, if any, uh, but it's something we should expect going forward. And then there's one interesting point around uh, the risk of backlash to layoffs and mergers where synergies are uh, important. You think about even if, um, say, a GM and a Chrysler had come together, so critical potentially to stabilizing the financial health and condition of those companies, on the other hand, it's not going to save the full three to five million jobs. You're going to have a lot of synergies uh, that are going to come out of job losses and job cuts. So we'll see how that plays out going forward. And then the last piece, again, just a cautionary note to many of our uh, uh, media friends uh, who are here, the fourth estate, uh, something that we've seen with the internet in particular, the velocity and validity of information. I've had a number of uh, media friends and colleagues complain uh, that they've been pressured to um, get out with stories with only checking uh, one source, make sure that they don't miss a deadline where they used to have 12 hours to think things through. Now you've got to know, get ahead of your competition and get it out on the press. And again, a lot of people being concerned about the validity of information in a market that has a high degree of, of leverage and a lot of volatility in the stock. Misinformation uh, is exceedingly uh, impactful in terms of how we think through uh, and how shareholders react. And something that we all have to be uh, cautious about and thoughtful of. And, in, and when you're in the boardroom or when you're doing deals, uh, and you know that there are going to be leaks. Uh, you have to pay attention to a press strategy and how you're going to address it. But again, um, it's something that I think that's going, we're going to see and going to be with us going forward.